Hey, this is Imani and you're watching Audio Feel TV. Ow. The. Oh. I'm so glad to have you here today, Imani. Thank you. Is there a correct or a good kind of war? I think there is a good kind of war. I think um, a, the war for justice, the war for equality, the war for uh, love and not for you know uh, oil or um, greed. Um, there is the right kind of war, but we're not. But how would it proceed, or, or uh, which kind of weapon would you have? Well, I think uh, dialogue is a good weapon. Uh, you know, talking to your neighbor, trying to walk a mile in their shoes, try to see what they're going through, it's a good weapon. Uh, education is a good weapon. Solidarity is a good weapon. There is human resources that work better, I think, than actual guns and uh, all kind of like mass destruction weapons. Would you say music is also a good weapon? Music is a good weapon. I think uh, it can help people think. Uh, it's another way to uh, approach a thought process. Um, music is a good weapon. Is uh, this also uh, why you are making music now? Is uh, this the reason to reach people to fight a good war? Um, that's not the reason, but I, I guess I, I use the, the, the music as an extension of myself and I guess uh, maybe the music looks like me uh, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a way of expressing myself. M music is a way to express of myself, so that's not the reason I do music, but I, I need the music to, to, to express uh, what I feel. So it is uh, for most uh, egoistic reasons. Yes, but I think everything in this world is egoistic reason. But um, it's just uh, how you use it that, that matters. And when did you decide that this will be the right way for you or in your life to make music, to follow your passion? Um, you know, you don't really think about it that way. It's just that I, I was a point in my life where I was working more to pay the rent than anything else. And I, I thought that couldn't be my life. You know, my life cannot be about working, working, working like a slave just to pay the rent. It had to be about something else. So if I had to work like a slave, it had to be about something that really mattered to me. And it was music. And so I made the choices and consequences. It wasn't easy at the beginning, but uh, I don't regret it. Had you the impression that uh, the fashion business where you have been uh, working in is too superficial, maybe? It was not just about being. I knew it was superficial from the minute I got into that business. I think everybody, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody I mean, knows yeah. It's not the big um, disappointment there. It's just that it's a short-term. Uh, it's a short-term uh, job. By the time you're 25, the exit door is blinking for every woman. You know, every model. So you know you're not going to do that for long. And me, I, I wanted to do something more meaningful anyway. Mm. You mentioned education. You have been raised in uh, Paris and went to a military school, right? Yes. Because your father is a member of uh, the French military. Mm -hmm. My dad was in the army. Um, did you intend to go also to the army or why Never. did you go Never. there? Never. Well, no, it was my dad's choice. He was always away on missions. And we are from, uh, he had seven children and he wanted to make sure that the street didn't raise his kids while he was away. So he put us in that school just to make sure the education part of his children was taken care of. But I never wanted to be a military. That was not for me. It so this would be the wrong kind that, of oh, war. Oh yeah, that completely yeah. is the wrong kind of war, obviously. Yeah. Would you say you were completely European? No, I was raised in a Comorian tradition, but my dad uh, really wanted us to um, to be uh, comfortable in France. You know, I spoke French obviously because I, I lived there and I was born there. But uh, it was a Comorian traditional um, uh, way of raising their children, where you know you had to know how to cook and clean and be the perfect wife. You know, because they prepare you to be the perfect, perfect wife. But my dad also, he wanted us to be independent. He had five girls, two boys, and um, he taught us to, 
change a tire, you know, uh, uh, be, uh, you know, uh, completely independent and not having to uh, be dependent of any man. So, so that was very modern of him. And I think it's the best, it's the best uh, way to live when you get to still be who you are. And it's not because you moved into a new country that you have to forget where you come from, but you also have to embrace the culture that is, um, that is um, welcoming you, you know? And I don't think you have to choose between the two. You could totally be a product of both. I think I'm a product of both. So what would you say is your heritage in your music? I think my heritage in my music is born in just the music that I love. I chose my own music because my parents they were not, not from a musical background, obviously, and they listened to just what was on the radio. And, um, and uh, I just loved American music and especially music like you know Tracy Chapman, the folk and uh, uh, soft rock music at the, at the time. And uh, it really is, um, the, I do the music that I love, not the music that I'm from. When did you come in contact with chess music? Because, it, I mean, in France there's a huge chess community and uh, they have a huge uh, chess tradition there. Well, France always had a huge respect for jazz artists, you know, and especially at the time where they didn't have any respect in their own country, the uh, African-American uh, in the 50s in America, you know, when they came in France, they were like, wow, here we are treated like human beings. Um, but um, to me, I discovered music uh, the way I love it very, late, you know, after my 20s maybe, like between 16 and up, uh, it's because I had to do my own education. So I, when I discovered uh, Nina Simone, it was a real slap in the face to me, like a revelation. You did also take some vocal lessons. I did, yeah, I did take some vocal lessons at the beginning because I want to kind of see I proved to myself it was not, if it wasn't just in my head, you know, because you want to do singing, but can you sing, really? So I took some lessons in one and two and ten uh, in America, and then I was like, I was encouraged by my teacher, and this is when I decided that, you know, maybe I could do that job. Mm -hmm. Because I think it is the difference between singing at home for, on your own <laughs> yeah. and uh, going on stage. Everybody knows into that. The public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first time I went on stage, I was shaking so much my knee and everything. I was putting my hand on my knee and then my hand was shaking. The whole body, your body is not responding to you anymore. And uh, it took me years um, to be completely at ease on stage. But as, I mean years, a lot of years. So you had a tour at uh, Paris nightclubs and bars to train? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Started a little bit in New York, did a lot in Paris and uh, France in general. And then, you know, uh, I, I got signed and did a lot more. And I did a three-year tour with over 400 dates. That, that kind of like cures you from stage fright. But did you change your name or choose your stage name before or after your first step on stage? No, I... Uh, Maybe it could be a clever trick, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> I changed my name when I started modeling for Imani. And uh, it, it, it was hard for me at the time to be Imani. And uh, so I didn't want to go into a second schizophrenia. So I kept Imani uh, as a singer. Does uh, the name Imani also have a deeper meaning for you? Well, to be honest, when I picked that name, it's because it was from my favorite movie at the time called Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. Okay. And the dumb princess in the movie is called Imani, easy. And so I always liked that name. It's only after that I found out that it was, that it meant faith in Swahili. Yes. And um, I thought it, I thought it was, uh, it was good karma because my real name is Nadia and in Russian it's hope. So hope and faith, yeah. you know, that's A not so bad. A perfect match. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, do you believe in God? I do. Yeah. Is this a very, do you have a strong uh, faith? Um, I, 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 I think I have strong faith. I have strong faith in what I do. I was raised Muslim, but, um, and, and, and I'm Muslim, but I do believe that God lives within every one of us. It's not just one guy, you know you're doing the deciding. I think God is in each one of us. So you have to have faith in what you do and in, in what you say. And um, this is where I put my faith.
you know. Did the change, or have you always been so self-conscious? He changed. No, no, he changed. He got stronger because um, I just realized that the more faith I put into the things that I was doing, the more result I was getting. So now I'm very much more comforted in in that. Do you think with your music you could also um, tell especially young w women or girls that they have to believe in themselves and in their dreams and so they can become what they want? I mean, in my music I try at least, I try to, to say that, I try to tell them that They have to take their time, they have to trust them themselves, they have to uh, maybe, and it's easy for me to say now that I'm not a young girl anymore, but uh, like um, also not to be so worried about what other people think. And it's not so, it's not bad if you make a mistake. It's really not bad if you trip and you fall. I think it's 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 part of life. What you need to, to trip, you fall, and then next time you'll do better. And um, I think we need to teach our girl that they are enough. They don't need to be looking a certain way and doing a certain type of things to be accepted um, by society. And I try to say that in my songs and I try to say that everywhere I go. If you ask for my opinion, that's what I would say. I think uh, it's important that people tell their story. I think most of the time we don't talk about and uh, talk enough about um, our journey. And I think it's always inspiring. I got it. I, I was inspired by other people's journey. It gives me strength to wake up one day and be like, okay, maybe I could do what I can. For example, sorry. Um, for example, it's gonna, I'm gonna sound so cheesy. <laughs> But <laughs> when uh, I lived in New York, uh, one day I opened the TV and I watched uh, The Life of Oprah. Mm -hmm. And Oprah comes from such a poor neighborhood, poor life, the poorest. She didn't have any running water in America. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then to see where she's at. And it's not about the money. It's about the, the, the number of people's lives she's changing. And I was like, and there's so many people like that in America where they tell you their story, where they had this, and all of a sudden they have so much. And I'm not talk, uh, talking about material mm -hmm. things. I'm talking about uh, the joy of life. You know, they, they look so happy. And um, to me, you have to tell to tell your story. It could it could inspire maybe one person, but you got to tell your story. So on the new album, I will have, have it here, which will be released in Germany. Maybe also all around the world, but I know in Germany it is um, August 26th. That's correct. So, the wrong kind of work. Which song would you say tells your story the best? Which song? Yes. Let's see. It's funny, but is it, there's a little bit of me in each song because it could be Lately and it could be How Long For You. And it could be, I used to cry, it's probably, yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's probably, probably the most accurate, yeah. But where do you get new influences? Is it by traveling all around the world or you now have your own kit mm -hmm. in the meantime? Is it a girl or a boy? A boy. Okay, um, this is also a new lifestyle now for you. Well, yeah, I get my inspiration from all kind of things, like you said, traveling, you know, motherhood, um, I get, you know, uh, reading, also movies, other people, um, genius, other people, artistry, I get, I get influences and I, every, every day is a new day, so inspiration to me is like sports, you got to do, you got to work, 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 I don't know who said that, I think it's, Oscar Wilde who said that inspiration has to find you working and I think that's what it is I think inspiration does not come like that you have to be writing 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 and then sometimes you get lucky and you, you write a good song so you had a lot of a uh, lot more songs I do we wrote about 60 songs that's a lot and we only kept 12 um, some of them maybe will make it to a some of them will be make it to an an album one day mm. and maybe I'll never use them and it's fine, it's okay, it's not like, it's only words, it's not the end of the world, yeah. Giving it to somebody else, I think this is a good idea because you could also start uh, songwriting for other artists. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I like writing for other people. 
I did it for a French soundtrack. Um, and uh, it's less pressure actually to write for someone else than when it is for you. But uh, is this uh, the movie where uh, this uh, Russian DJ duo detected you? Yes, 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 yes. So, so the Jupe des Filles. If we had planned it, we would never have been able to do it, but it happens and, it, and, it, and it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's what uh, strength your faith into what you're doing, in a way. It's signs to me. Uh, you know? It is like Tatum, like a fate. Right, fate, exactly. Uh. Don't Be So Shy is a completely other style than the album. So, um, do you think you have to explain people that this still works together? Some people didn't understand. They thought, because it got so big, they thought it was going to be my new single and my new direction. So I had to, of course, explain. But uh, most people, I think, understand that it was a remix. It has nothing to do with me and it's just... And we are living that type of type of music now, a lot of artists like Azaf Avidon. Uh, he know, doesn't was, like his remix. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but uh, he has to admit that without that remix, a lot of people wouldn't know who he was. In France, to be honest with you, nobody, nobody knew who he was, okay. even the journalists. And then that remix came out, was number one for a month. And then he started to do all type of prestigious yeah. shows in France. And now everybody knows about it. So he might not like the remix, which I completely understand. But he, he could not, not like the situation that put him, uh, that he received from that remix because mm. at the end of the day he's an artist and he wants to be seen by the most people possible. Otherwise he just sings in his room and he never releases mm. any album, you know what I mean? Mm. Do you think this is a little bit upset if you say, well, no, I don't like the remix, but... Uh, I mean, he has um, the right not to like the remix, mm. but to claim he hates it and... Uh, I think it's a little bit ungrateful mm. because uh, at some time, you, at some point, you have to be grateful to what life gives you. It was just a way for him to be finally known by the world because he's such a great artist, and he deserved it. He deserved it to be known. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you also deserve it. So I think this is a good door opener now for this new album. You will also be on tour in November. That's correct. Will be again an acoustic tour or will you have a, your band with you? It'll be with my band. We're eight on stage. It's uh, two guitars, uh, classic electric, two cellos, piano, drums and bass. I know it is very hard, but um, could you pick one favorite song from the new album? It is hard because, you know, I, 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 I have a favorite song, depends on my mood. But uh, to me, it will be between two songs. Can I say okay. two songs? Yes, you can. It'll be Along For You. Uh-huh. And, oh wait, it's hard, two songs. It, two songs is really hard. I know. No, wait, it'll be You Don't Belong To Me. Okay. And Lately. You Don't Belong To Me and Lately. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So What is yours? Uh, oh, you said I, I used, used to, to cry. cry. Yeah, yeah, I used to cry. Yeah, yeah. this is my favorite. No, nice. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. All the best, and we will see you on tour. Thank you. Thank you. So I have uh, like a.